my distinct honor and privilege to introduce to you a man who stands for what is right with the world, the opportunities that we have, both with technology, but grounded in the principles of liberty and freedom. Join me in giving a rousing welcome to Roger Veer. Thank you so much, Terry. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, you thought you were going to hear about Bitcoin Cash. <laughs> You're going to hear about something that's probably as exciting or maybe even more exciting than Bitcoin Cash at the moment and wasn't possible before the invention of Bitcoin. So you're gonna hear about freesociety.com, the next step after Bitcoin. So uh, I think we're at the right conference to announce this sort of thing. Yeah. Thank you. So to sum it up, we are purchasing sovereign land from a government to create the world's first libertarian country. So as I'm sure uh, a lot of people in this room are aware that lots of people have made uh, a lot of money thanks to cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. And a big giant chunk of those people are hardcore libertarian volunteerists, you know, free market advocates. So what's the next step? Here it is. All right. So who are we? Myself and my good buddy, uh, Olivier. Uh, we came together and we've been working on this for a while. Olivier was a very, very early Bitcoin adopter, even earlier than myself. Uh, he's been working on this sort of thing for the last 10 years. He's a lifelong libertarian. I'm Roger Veer. I'm the first uh, investor in the entire Bitcoin ecosystem for Bitcoin startups and that sort of thing. I'm also a voluntarist. For people that don't know what a voluntarist is, it's basically somebody who thinks that all human interactions should be on a voluntary basis or not at all. And the difference between a voluntary interaction and a coerced interaction is the difference between working for a living or being a slave. It's the difference between making love or being raped. And so all throughout society and all your interactions with people in your day-to-day -day life, everybody deals with everybody on a voluntary basis, with a few exceptions, murderers, rapists, thieves, and governments. <laughs> so if we all know that murderers, rapists, and thieves are bad people for dealing with each other on a course of non-voluntary means, what does that make you think about governments? So anyhow, in history, there's been other people that have tried to do things. So there was the Republic of Minavera. I probably didn't pronounce that very well, uh, but it was basically a sand atoll out in the middle of the Pacific and a very, very wealthy a group of people, I think it was in the late seventies, went out there and started dredging up more sand and they tried to build their own island out in the middle of uh, the Pacific. And they wanted to start their own, you know, libertarian-ish uh, you know, geographic piece of the world there. And what happened as soon as they had spent a whole bunch of money dredging up this uh, sand atoll and turning it into an island, uh, the neighboring, you know, local coercive, you know, violent thug showed up from the government of uh, Tonga, I believe, and said, oh, thank you for dredging up this land for us. It's ours now. And they used a bunch of guns and kicked them out of there. Sealand is another very, very interesting story. It uh, was a gun turret that was abandoned off the coast of the UK after World War II. And some people have set up a, a data center out there and they, they kind of say that it's their own thing. Uh, anyhow, seasteading is also very interesting. Uh, and Liberland is another project uh, between Croatia and Serbia where both countries claim this land doesn't belong to us. The reason they're claiming that land doesn't belong to either of those countries is because if they lay claim to that land, they lose claim to an even bigger piece of land that both countries want a lot more. But uh, that's another fantastic project that I'm a big fan of and a supporter of as well. And uh, you know, anything that's peaceful, that's, that's my motto. Anybody should be allowed to do absolutely anything that's peaceful. So um, throughout the world, you know, if you can raise enough money, why not just ask? Hey, there's a lot of governments out there with a bunch of debt and poverty and natural disasters. Just ask them, hey, if we give you a whole giant pile of money, how about you give us some land? And that's exactly what we've done. And uh, we've been really, really surprised by just how much uh, reception there's been from these governments. So uh, we can help them clear their national debt. We can help pretty much everybody that's at this conference realizes that the more economic freedom a place has, the more financial prosperity they have. Uh, you know, if you look at the, that's right. So. If you look around the world, the places with the most economic freedom have the most material wealth. And uh, 
I'm pretty sure that's gonna happen in short order with our uh, economic free zone. So, uh, and of course there's you know, tremendous employment opportunities there because of this. And we already have more than 100 million US dollars of private capital committed to this. And that's just the start, right? To make it clear, the lawyers have told me very, very carefully that this is not an ICO. <laughs> so, we so we are not, we are not having an ICO, I just wanna make that clear. But we're exploring very carefully what the appropriate ways to allow the general public to participate in this as well. So the $100 million is uh, from people the hardcore libertarians that uh, have made some money in the cryptocurrency space that want to see a free society within our lifetime. So we have a bit of uh, selection criteria, right? We want to find a place that's close to existing economic powerhouses, needs to be accessible by water. We, want, we need it to be in a stable government uh, conflict free area. You know, we don't want to build it where there's a war zone going on already. Um, we need to have a big enough piece of land where we can really do this. And we need uh, the existing country that we're gonna buy land from has to have a constitution that allows for this sort of thing. So actually we called up some governments already. We've been talking to a number of governments already and uh, we were stunned by just how interested and enthusiastic they were. They're like, you're gonna give us a bunch of money for land we're not particularly using already at the moment. So uh, it was really, really a pleasant surprise just how interested they've been and of course, uh, Small governments are easier to deal with than big giant governments and uh, we'll be naming some names in the future but not quite yet today. Um, and of course the timing is right, right? People all across the world are realizing that government doesn't work. Uh, a big influencing book in my own life was Harry Brown's Why Government Doesn't Work and I, I read that book and it started to open my eyes. I guess government doesn't work and uh, the whole world is becoming decentralized right before our eyes. I and mean, we, we're all here at this conference, we know that. Um, but the rest of the world is starting to realize that as well. And governments are, you know, they're not only going in the opposite direction, they've, you know, been in the opposite direction since day one. They're a coercive institution that deal with other individuals by violence or threats of violence. And for any sane person, you should realize that dealing with other adults through violence or threats of violence, that's not the right way to live your life. So uh, governments uh, and all forms of violence, uh, we're gonna do away with those as much as we possibly can. So. Uh, and basically, we need to set the right example for the rest of the world, right? There's not gonna be any government of any kind. Uh, all the basic rules will be agreed upon up front. So we're gonna buy this land and we're gonna set the rules of the game plan there. And uh, if anybody's read uh, David Friedman's The Machinery of Free Freedom, there's a bunch of uh, fantastic uh, examples of how this could potentially work. But at the end of the day, the free market's gonna be what figures it out. So. Uh, the law and the constitution are gonna be part of the actual land deed for this. So think of it kind of like a private home, home ownership uh, association. You lay out the ground rules from day one and, and that's the playing rules. And uh, it's gonna be again based on the ideas of uh, voluntarism and the non-aggression principle. Um, competing private protection agencies will deal with uh, protection, right? Think about it. If a police car pulls up behind you while you're driving, do you feel more or less safe? If you're driving down the road and a private security guard that uh, patrols the local shopping mall pulls up behind you, do you feel more or less safe? Probably about the same. Um, but that should tell you which one of those agencies is doing a better job of making you feel safe and secure in your belongings. Um, and uh, we'll negotiate some additional protection from uh, external threats from the country that sells us the land originally. The United Nations, I'm sure everybody here is uh, probably not that big of a fan of the United Nations. We're not gonna join. So. so of course, no plans to join, right? It would require a central authority. This land isn't going to have a central authority. We're all about decentralization. We're gonna buy some land. There's not gonna be a central authority and not dealing with the UN avoids a lot of other issues. So I'm sure you're all wondering about passports. That would require a central authority. It would require UN membership, right? Just use your existing passport. Kids can automatically get the you know, citizenship from their parents. The private market's gonna come up with way better alternatives than passports, right? We can have uh, ID systems in the blockchain. A lot of people probably don't realize it because everybody here was born after World War I, but before World War I, you didn't need a passport. You just showed up wherever the heck you wanted to go, and that was it. There was nobody there waiting at the border saying, your papers, please. And that's how it's gonna be in our free society as well. 
So limitations, right? We need to minimize our attack surface. No nuclear weapons. Wikipedia has a great example of why nuclear weapons are a violation of the non-aggression principle, uh, basically because they can't be used for any defense of purpose uh, ever, and it's a threat to everybody around you. You can't export weapons and drugs, mainly because the other governments around you are going to be mad about that, if, and they probably won't sell us the land, so that'll be part of the land title. We'll have some sort of age of consent, uh, and we won't be uh, allowing people to secede. That'll be built into the original land title that they've agreed to when they purchased the land. So. What's next? Uh, we're exploring ways for the public and the interested parties to participate. Again, this is not an ICO. Uh, we welcome all libertarians, constitutional experts, free thinkers, join us, voluntarists, free market advocates, anybody who wants to participate is uh, welcome so long as you uh, are a fan of the non-aggression principle. So that's our big announcement. Sorry we didn't cover Bitcoin Cash, but before the invention of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, this sort of thing wouldn't have even been possible. So. Uh, Bitcoin enabled this. This is the next step uh, after Bitcoin. I think I have uh, about 10 minutes left for questions. I imagine there's probably a few questions. Uh, speak up, don't be shy, and uh, visit uh, freesociety.com for information. We have a white paper up there. Um, who has a question? I see lots of hands, okay. so And Lynn Olbrich just right here in front. So Lynn gets to go first. Uh, Ross Olbrich's mother, for those of you that don't know. So. Yep, so uh, the question for those that couldn't hear, what about uh, people being extradited from this land? So uh, we were actually just talking about that earlier this morning and uh, we're not sure to be honest. So I, I suppose if some other country wants to extradite somebody, they'll have to contract with one of the protection agencies in the land or, to get them or come and get them themselves or? I was thinking we'll more see. of extraditing from the United States, somehow get yeah. someone Please from the United States. So the, the question is how would we extradite someone from the U.S.? Uh, well, it's just a little fancy. Yeah, I, I don't think the I think the U.S. is the big bully, and uh, I think they do whatever they want. And as much as I would love to help on that front, I, I I'm not sure how we can help on that front at the moment. So, and this guy looks very very eager with his hand up in the back. Would the population be armed to the extent to be able to defend themselves against the existing sovereign government? Should a problem with the sovereign government be solved by the extradition of people from the United uh, So the question is, will the the citizens or the not even citizens, the people living there? Uh, be armed enough to defend themselves from the previous sovereign government that owned the land. Uh, hopefully, we'll see. Um, there's a whole lot of details that need to be worked out. Uh, but at the same time, even if we don't get everything absolutely perfect from day one, it's still probably going to be a heck of a lot better than any other country in the entire world at this point. Uh, so, I, I think this guy in the back was even more good, but you're next. So. And so the question is, can we grow and research cannabis uh, on this land? Uh, probably not for export. Uh, a lot of it will depend on what sort of negotiations we're able to finalize with the country that we purchased the land from. Of course, any sane person that's heard of the non-aggression principle would have no problem with that whatsoever. Um, but you know, the devil is always in the details. And again, a lot of it will depend on exactly what sort of agreement we can get from the existing country with the land that we purchase. And I promised you were next. Yeah. So what size land are we talking about and what size society in numbers, just so I can grasp the concept? So the question is what size land, what size society, how many people, you right. know, how big of a place? Um, the bigger the better, right, right uh, is the answer. So a lot of that will depend on uh, once the lawyers figure out exactly how we can allow the public to participate. A hundred million dollars is just the start, right? We would love to have Half a billion dollars, I don't think is out of the question. Maybe even a billion dollars can be raised. I and mean, there's a lot of cryptocurrency millionaires out there that uh, should, would and should love this project. So uh, the more money we raise, the bigger uh, a piece of land we can buy. And maybe we'll even do a couple of different pieces of, of land in different parts of the world and have a couple of competing areas as well. So the more places like this we can set up around the world, the better. And uh, the more money we raise, the more, the more we can do. So no limit on geographical. Well, if, if the United States would sell us 100% of their land mass, then maybe we would do that. <laughs> um, do you have a short list of countries that are willing to... Yeah, we definitely have a short list. We've actually already been talking to a number of countries. Unfortunately, I can't tell you the names of them right now, so I'm going to have to leave you in suspense on that front. You meant to say, what are the names, not do you have a short list? 
<laughs> yeah, uh, those, those names will be coming in the future, but uh, I can't tell you at the moment. I'm sorry. So, oh, nice to see you again. So his question is, what are we going to do about it once we build this into, you know, the world's most pro prosperous, you know, geographical area in the world, and the government that we bought the land or some other government nearby decides, hey, you built a lot of nice stuff. We want to take that. Um, so David Friedman refers to that problem in his book, uh, The Machinery of Freedom, Freedom, as the hard problem. Uh, I think the hard problem has been solved. Um, I don't necessarily feel incredibly comfortable talking about that solution in public at the moment, but if you Google that, there's information about that, and that ties back into one of the other questions, though, as well. Um, so. so what would determine, what is the criteria you're saying then of, um, to be able to be allowed to live there? Like, in other words, you know, how do we get the pearly gates, so to speak? So uh, we're, we're working out all the details again, and once again, this is not an ICO. Um, <laughs> But the idea at some point is to basically auction off the land. Uh, and then anybody that buys the land can do whatever they want with it within the, the title restriction of the land. And again, the question was, how, how do you get to come there and be there? So uh, you know, the free market is, I guess, the short answer. So. So the question is, will there be taxes? Uh, of course not. No, this, this society is based on the non-aggression principle. And what about the roads? Um, well, here's a pretty fancy piece of technology in my pocket, right? Governments didn't build this. This is a heck of a, it allows me to, to, to contact anyone anywhere on the planet for, you know, I don't know, a couple pennies a day, depending on what my bill is, less than maybe a dollar a day. I can contact anyone on the planet and communicate with them. That's a heck of a lot harder and more complicated to build than a flat spot on the ground. <laughs> but granted, flat spots on the ground are important. <laughs> but uh, I think a nice way of looking at it uh, will be just like, you know, you have a, a big skyscraper building and you have an elevator shaft and all the tenants within the building contribute to to maintain the elevator, it'll be, it'll be the same way. All the property owners nearby, they want roads, they'll chip in voluntarily, and uh, the free market will figure it out on, on the details. So no, there will be no, there'll be no taxation of any kind. There will be no central authority of any kind to impose that taxation. We're gonna find out what a free society actually looks like and works like. And uh, even if you're not a libertarian, even if you're not a voluntarist, even if you're you know, a hardcore status and you love government controlling everything, you should love and support our project. And the reason why you should love and support our project is because all of us crazy libertarians can go off to our little piece of land and we can fail miserably. And you state-loving, you know, president-worshipping people out there can say, look at how bad they screwed everything up. Look, we need our government. So even if you think I'm a nutcase and voluntarists and libertarians are nuts, you should still support our project so you have something to point at as, as to how badly we failed. And I don't think we're going to fail. Yeah, uh, the devil's always in the details. The more land we can get a hold of, the better uh, in our book. And a lot of that will depend on exactly how much capital we come up with. But we have, you know, over a hundred million dollars of private capital already committed to it. So that's a pretty good start. So, Joby. So your question is, are we going to let you in, Joby? <laughs> um, the, 
the, the devil is always in the devil is always in the details. Um, my initial gut reaction is that we probably wouldn't allow people to buy in if they have a bunch of money that was stolen from others. <coughs> Texas. Um, so, uh, but uh, again, we'll have to work out all these, and there's still, you know, this is in the early phases at this point, but uh, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go here. So. I, I think you've just found a new business opportunity. <laughs> so, and then the question for those that, that maybe can't hear because uh, we're live streaming this, uh, the question is: Is are they going to issue IDs and how how you know what sort of what sort of services can we provide? And the answer is: You can provide any service that's peaceful. Do whatever you want. If you want to issue IDs in the country and start a business, go ahead and do it. Right? So. Um, you, you, I'm sorry. You already had a question. So other people haven't had a, a question. I'm sorry. So, I know the idea is for everything to be very peaceful, but do you have authority figures to enforce peacefulness? Uh, you can hire whoever you want to help enforce it, and uh, as long as it's peaceful, you're allowed to do whatever you want. So, the, the general guide, and the question was, you know, how, how do you keep the, the peace? And uh, the answer to that is you don't keep the peace through threats of violence. And that's what we have in society today, is you, we have the peace being kept through giant massive threats of violence. And if you do anything that disturbs the peace, we're going to hurt you, even if that thing that you want to do is something completely peaceful, like research with a plant. So um, anything that's peaceful will be allowed. And another fantastic book that maybe isn't that well known amongst you know, libertarian circles is uh, Anything That's Peaceful by, I think, uh, Leonard Reed, who's the author of I, Pencil. I think a lot of people may know the essay, I, Pencil. This is an entire book by him that I think he wrote in the 50s, which is a fantastic book. Um, are we doing okay for time? So, okay. Oh, okay, I, I thought it was earlier than that. So, and I feel bad, rather than me picking people at random in the audience, maybe we can have people line up down here. Is that all right with you, We would need Karen? a microphone so. and uh, perhaps Perhaps we can get. We can have people line up right here, right and you can come on here. the microphone. On yeah, that come on work. down. For short questions, no time for a presentation. A short question. <laughs> and if you have another question, you can line up right here, and that way I don't have to pick at random and make people feel like I'm ignoring them. So, how do you enforce the not peace? How do you enforce the not peace? Yeah. So, uh, if you see something not peaceful happening, feel free to take action. Uh, right? It's it's all of us. So. Roger, how much time do you think, for, realistically, would be before we could actually move there? I mean, we're, you're not holding your feet to the fire, but just what do you think? Um, so the question was, how long until we can actually start moving there and showing up? Uh, are we talking a year? Are we talking yeah. 10 years, so 20 the, years? Uh, all of us are getting older day by day. So, uh, no, I, I'm best case scenario, maybe within a year. Hmm. Worst case scenario, within five, I think, is where we're looking at. And uh, realistically, maybe two-ish. Is probably the right right ballpark. So, how can we help you build this? Ooh, good question. We, we are not having an ICO, <laughs> um, so you cannot participate in our ICO. But we are exploring very carefully ways in which the public can participate. So keep an eye out for that. FreeSociety.com is the website. Follow us on Twitter, um, and if you want to get involved on the website, we have a contact form. Uh, we're looking for more people to help us, of course. So I look, I look forward to having your help as well. Thank you. So. Thank you. So essentially, you're dealing with governments currently to buy this land. Now, a lot of those governments have acquired their land through force. How do you resolve making sure that, in many cases currently, we use the, the term First Nations have owned that land prior? and the governments have acquired it from those First Nations. Now, if you're purchasing land from the government who had acquired it through force, are you having a method to resolve that? Yeah, great question. Um, my own personal opinion there is for the most part, like of course, what the United States government did to the Native Americans, absolutely horrible. I think the word for it is you know, mass murder, um, absolutely horrible, but at the end of the day, the people that have that happen to them, they're all long dead and gone, and none of the people alive today were the ones that did that. So I'm not sure how we can go back and correct those past wrongs. Uh, for people that have an idea on how to correct that, I'm all ears. Um, I'm not trying to say correct it, I'm just trying to say resolve, you know, we're buying, you're, you're yeah. buying something. 
we'll, we'll do our best to buy land that has the cleanest blood-free title that we could possibly find, but there's not much of that anywhere in the world at this point, so, yeah. Uh, I was just wondering if you had heard of the Ubuntu Liberation Movement with Michael Tellinger out of South Africa? A little bit louder one more time, so. I was just wondering if you had heard about the Ubuntu Liberation Movement out of South Africa with Michael Tellinger. So I've heard of Ubuntu and that's as far as I, I know. So maybe you could tell me a, a tiny bit more? And um, well, it's basically set up to where... Um, right into the microphone. I'm nervous. <laughs> it's basically set up to where everyone contributes to community projects. So um, every week, if you have you know a town of a thousand people, for three hours a day, you know, you have 3,000 man hours at the end of the week getting done towards community projects in exchange for free energy technology, which is what he's working on. So um, he read, wrote a book called the Ubuntu Liberation Movement, but it moves us collectively towards a cashless society, not needing money because we've built a sustainable economy okay. by everyone I'll, contributing. I'll more, It'd be a really cool that. thing to implement in your... Okay. Town, so. I'll read more about that. Thank you so much for that. So. Um, super all for free market and also for inclusion. Are there thoughts about how to create this economy and create the community so that there's a lot of people involved and it's not just rich white folks? Thank yeah. You. So the more people that participate, the better. And if you have some ideas, we would love the help. So, awesome. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, we got one coming up? Uh, all right, so have you heard of seasteading and how are you going to work with us? <laughs> <laughs> of, of course I've heard of seasteading. Yeah. I've been a giant fan of seasteading for, for decades now. Um, Pat, a lot of people don't know this. One of the big driving forces behind seasteading was Patrick Friedman. You might recognize that last name. Uh, he's the grandson of Milton Friedman, son of uh, David Friedman. Uh, read all of these guys. You know, they, they really, really are sharp thinkers. So, uh, of course, I'd love to work with you guys. Uh, maybe you can start seasteading right off the coast of uh, whatever land we wind, wind up with. So Perfect. I'd love, love to communicate with that. Great. So. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank Please you. Roger, so. Roger, thank you so much.